And dog grooming is my worst nightmare. Auxiliary prepositions, adverbial conjunctions, verbal predicates and relative clauses, and a ton of other linguistic mumbo jumbo. And it's a sucky feeling. But honestly, in my personal experience, Russian memes are far superior to English memes, by the way. As Erliam Devel, Lyesach Dachul Yapayach, Janue Mergedin. A lot of people ask me how I study languages and how I got so good at it, since I speak a few and I'm known to have tried learning a bunch more. So how? What do I do? What steps do I take? The unfortunate truth is, I don't know, I don't really, I always struggle with this question because I really don't have a particular method, I really don't. I just kind of do whatever I feel like and it just keeps working. But let me explain myself a bit more. Feel free to stick around to the second half of this video where I do actually go over a list of ways and tips that help me learn languages and they might help you too. This video is more of a semi-random stream of consciousness, so please don't take it too seriously. I'm just looking to express a few thoughts and make a few jokes. Everyone learns differently, not just languages, everything in general. Some stuff works for some people, other stuff works for other people. Today, in 2024, there is truly an unlimited amount of resources for learning languages. From online and physical classes, to YouTube videos and full-length feature films and award-winning shows, music of any genre, books, video games, and of course, a quintillion language learning apps. Now, I've gotten messages from people telling me that they're struggling to find resources. I promise I'm not trying to sound condescending here, and I'm sorry if this comes off as a bit rude, but let's say you've always wanted to study Spanish. Like, I'm just saying. That being said, I really don't think there's any sort of secret method that would make you fluent in Spanish in a month, or two, or a day, and definitely not in 10 minutes. The only secret is practice. Never stop practicing. Consistency and persistence are more important than anything. The reality is, it's a grind. It's tedious, it's annoying, it's frustrating, and it requires a whole lot of motivation. It's something you have to keep on working relentlessly for years using a wide variety of methods that combine listening, reading, writing, and speaking. My key issue 99% of the time is motivation. Sometimes I like to be incredibly lazy and do absolutely nothing, and I have to force myself, and it's a sucky feeling. But honestly, as soon as you force yourself to take that initial first step of picking up the book or opening the app, it just gets so much easier to just keep going. It's the starting I hate. It's my least favorite part. Nevertheless, when it comes to how I, myself specifically, have been able to pick up a bunch of languages over the years, I can really only speak from my own personal experience. And there are really only two factors that I feel have definitely propelled me into the world of language learning, and both of them are sort of outside of my own control, in a way. Quick disclaimer, I'm sorry, I am really not trying to toot my own horn here. I really want to emphasize that what I'm about to say is not just me bragging, I promise. I'm just explaining part of the reason as to why I speak the languages that I speak, which directly segues into the tips and tricks that help me learn languages that I'm about to mention. Number one is I was very fortunate with the environment that I was born into. To a degree, we are all products of our environments. From age zero, I was constantly exposed to Russian, Hebrew, and English. These are my three best languages that I'm fully fluent in, and specifically these are the ones which I honestly don't ever remember a time when I wasn't fluent in them. It just sort of happened on its own, and it was outside of my own control as a child. And then I also have Latvian, which I lived in Latvia for the majority of my life. I couldn't really avoid being constantly surrounded by everything Latvian, both in school and outside of it. So eventually I picked that up as well. Of course, you have to maintain your languages, otherwise you'll eventually forget them. And I think that this is one of the key differences for me. I don't think I'm very good in learning languages, especially from zero, but I'm quite good at maintaining them. I'd say a rough estimate of all the media that I consume within a month, let's say, which includes every form of audio and video, like music and movies and stuff, would be like 50% English, 20% Russian, 10% Hebrew, 10% Latvian, 5% Spanish, and 5% whatever the hell else I'm currently interested in. I like variety. I also have friends and family with whom I speak different languages, which definitely helps me maintain my fluency. And oftentimes it's a combination of a few at the same time. Seriously, when I think of like an outside perspective, 
you should hear some of the conversations with friends from back home. We, when saying a single sentence, we'll use a random mix of Latvian, Russian, and English. And it just, it just feels natural. No chill, guys, let's pasol. Tirgus isn't gonna be open forever. Later, later. Ša negrib. Kakoi negrib? Davai already, pagnali. Labi, labi, ša. Ša, paga, let me just psač real quick, no? No time for psač, davai. Mikrinč is already leaving soon. We still need to get to the Pietura, no? Da no, bobans, jobans, labi, labi, coming already, no? Depending on where you live in the world, you might have a similar situation. In some areas, children are growing up speaking two, three, four, five languages at the same time, in different settings. In Europe, for example, there's a place like Luxembourg, which has three official languages, plus a massive diaspora of Portuguese people. Like, did you know that like 20% of Luxembourg is Portuguese? It's ridiculous. I once met a guy from there who spoke Portuguese at home, plus Luxembourgish, French, German, and English fluently, just because that's how he grew up. From an outsider's perspective, that's insane, but for people he grew up with, it's just business as usual. Also, it's true what they say about the fact that the more languages you speak, the easier it is to learn others, especially if they're related. If the Luxembourger already speaks Portuguese and French, picking up another Romance language later in life, like Spanish or Italian, would probably be much, much easier for him than for someone like me who doesn't speak any Portuguese and my French is very far from fluent. On the other hand, for me, as a Russian speaker, picking up another Slavic language like Serbian, Polish or Bulgarian is gonna be much easier than for the Luxembourger. In any case, again, I feel incredibly grateful for my upbringing and I consider myself very lucky for how it all turned out. I don't think I have any special ability or talent in learning languages, but the way that I grew up has definitely made it easier down the line for me personally. Anyway, moving on. The second thing is languages are kind of my obsession. I don't know if you noticed, but I kind of like languages. In fact, I like languages so much that I spend a large chunk of my day thinking about them, looking up random words, trying to understand weird grammatical constructions, watching videos on similarities between Turkish and Mongolian, Lithuanian and Sanskrit. I don't speak any of these languages, but my curiosity cripples me. If I don't find out what the similarities are, I won't be able to sleep. Say what you want about various YouTube polyglots who may or may not be either faking it or severely exaggerating and sugarcoating it. Some are not, some definitely are, but you can't deny the fact that they're all obsessed to a degree. And regardless of how fluent they actually claim to be in like 50 languages, they spend hours and months and years looking at random language related things. Some people in this world, actually probably most people in this world just don't care. They couldn't care less about learning another language and it's just not something on their mind day to day. And that's also perfectly fine. Someone might be obsessed with learning to play the guitar or painting natural landscapes or football or soap making or competitive dog grooming. Guitar's pretty cool, painting is not really my thing, but I can definitely appreciate a great work of art and all the effort that went into it. Football is the most boring thing on this godforsaken planet. Making soap sounds like something I try for half an hour at a random workshop at a summer camp as a kid, and dog grooming is my worst nightmare. But that's just me. These are my own personal opinions and preferences. There exist multiple people out there in our world whose entire lives revolve around making soap and grooming dogs. This is the part where I jokingly say, and I never want to meet him. <laughs> but that's not true. If your entire life is grooming dogs and making soap and you love it, that's friggin' awesome, dude. Right on, keep going, never stop. Let's grab a beer sometime and let me hear all about it. My point is that my brain is hardwired to constantly think about languages, which helps me be good at it, I guess because I keep doing it, because I can't stop, because I'm obsessed. At the same time, I can't kick or block a ball to save my life, but there are plenty of people who can. And these are the people I never wanna meet. <laughs> God, football is just the worst. Hey, listen, I don't really know exactly what I'm doing when I study languages. I don't really make specific plans to focus on vocabulary today and focus on verbs the next day. I hate making schedules. I'm not a very organized person in general, truth be told. I just kind of do what I feel like. And it just so happens that what I feel like most of the time is usually in some way or another related to learning languages. So when people ask me how I study languages, what do I do? I always struggle to answer this question, especially on the spot. Cause I really don't know, dude. There's no method, it's all madness. 
Best I can do is give you a disorganized list of random activities in no particular order that I do myself, practically every day, which may or may not help you learn languages as well. So here you go. Listen to music. I am quite into the most random music from all over the world. My playlists are all over the place. It's mostly normal people music, I promise, but just to give you a taste of one of the funkier playlists that I have. Livonian folk song, Mongolian rap, Lakota lullaby, uh, Taiwanese folk metal, a folk song in Welsh, the Tuvan national anthem for some reason, a song in Russian, a song in Albanian, and a whole lot of other stuff that I don't even want to mention. Bonus points if you're listening to the song while learning the lyrics. Am I ever going to learn any of these languages? I don't know, most likely not, but now at least I know how to sing in them and how to pronounce them without understanding a single word. Speak to yourself out loud. I cannot recommend this one enough. This has helped me improve in every single language I have ever learned. Some of you may know that I've been learning Manx for a while. There are only like two to three thousand-ish speakers out there in the world, and 99% of them live on the Isle of Man, which is a place where I don't live. So how do I maintain it? Uh, Dachla, Feinla, as Hanelis can show Kreta Mijenu, Bim a co soilsha er creer be er ard, Tamijenu ekatra shen, Mirsam player Tami uns chamer liaviem, as Tami chimsach in edachem, as as curad se frest, as Houts Tamijenue, Tami just frailest lord, frailest lord, Tami. Provolus to me clachta just frailest lord. As te cuniliam un simodiachten de nach jarud ne foclen noa ren mi ginsach jam er some player. Er fed the vel to me de kinjach to me class chenad as to me gra ad ulien tra. For the te begin quech. Och, scumiliam, smiliam lord, romhin, irnesher, unsichilk. As Erliam de Vel Liesach Dachul Yapayach Genue Mirgeden. Memrise. It's a great app for building vocabulary and especially for small languages like Manx. And it's free. It's just flashcards and stuff, nothing special. It does occasionally get annoying and repetitive, but it does the job, so I do recommend it. And it doesn't have a mascot that haunts my dream. So that's a bonus. Watch movies in target language with subtitles in native language and watch movies in native language with subtitles in target language. The first one is probably for those who are a bit more advanced and the second one is like more for beginners. I watch a whole lot of shows and movies and videos all the time and I love reading subtitles. A lot of people might disagree with me on this, but I like to follow along with the dialogue. If it's in the language that I'm learning, it helps me connect the dots between what I'm hearing and what I'm reading. Highly recommend it if you want to improve your reading and comprehension skills while enjoying a favorite show. Quick editor's note, screw any kinds of dubs. I hate dubbed movies. No matter, I don't care what language they speak, I'm gonna watch it in the original. I'd rather sit through three hours of subtitles reading every single line than deal with one second of the dialogue not matching the lip movement. It drives me absolutely crazy and it's a complete deal breaker for me. My only exceptions to this are Shaolin Soccer and Kung Fu Hustle. Those dubs are the most hilarious thing I've ever seen in my life. Highly recommend. Find YouTubers that do a thing that you like, but in your target language. In the YouTube of today, there is no shortage of incredible content creators in a thousand different languages. You're learning Spanish and like gaming? Bam, that exists. You're learning Hungarian and you like makeup tutorials? Bam, that also exists. You're learning Mongolian and you like documentaries about nature? Bam, what are you waiting for? Of course it exists. You're learning Georgian and you like cooking shows? Bam, bam, bam. Go watch some right now. 
There is an endless amount of content being uploaded every second, and all you gotta do is look for it, and I promise you, you'll discover it. In my personal experience, Russian memes are far superior to English memes, by the way. Also, there is just so much incredible stuff on the Russian side of YouTube that English audiences will unfortunately never get to see or experience, and that's a real shame in my opinion. And I could honestly say the same thing about the Hebrew and Latvian sides of YouTube, both of which have some undiscovered gold, 100%, and, but, you know, those sides of YouTube are tiny in comparison to Russian, and especially to English. And I'm sure the same thing can be said about pretty much any other language on YouTube. It's a shame, but I'll never get to experience Hungarian makeup tutorials to the fullest. Follow random Facebook slash Instagram pages that post in your target language. Same principle as the YouTube thing. Infinite possibilities. Join Facebook and Discord groups where people speak your target language. This is especially prevalent if you're learning a small slash endangered language. This might be one of the only ways to actually interact with someone else who speaks your target language in an informal setting. Google insert your target language, grammar, PDF, and look at the grammar to better understand how the language works. This method is probably not for the general population, but it's perfect for linguistics nerds like myself. Check this out. Let's say you're learning Breton. Bam! 420 pages of grammatical goodness. You got your vowels and consonants, mutations, auxiliary prepositions, adverbial conjunctions, verbal predicates and relative clauses, and a ton of other linguistic mumbo-jumbo. You even got 40 pages of selected readings with commentary, like a ton of actual stories with a transcription, translation, morphological gloss, and commentary. Damn, I'm... I might actually have to bookmark this for future for myself, actually. Yeah. The one big minus with this method is that actual academic grammars tend to have complicated and technical vocabulary that isn't immediately accessible to everyone. And also some of them, despite the wealth of knowledge, can be spectacularly boring to read through. So, but I do recommend it if you're willing to give it a try. Books especially bilingual books, which have your native language on one side of the page and your target language on the other side of the page. Shout out to the little prince. Seriously, bilingual books are an incredible invention and I cannot recommend them enough. Play video games you like, but change the language to your target language. Seriously, this has worked wonders for me when I played Civilization 5 and 6 in Spanish. And it makes it fun to learn and you just, you start picking up vocabulary so fast without even noticing it. You just randomly know a whole lot of words without even realizing that you learned them. Go to language exchange events in your area. These things are great. They exist literally all over the world. All you gotta do is just look them up. They're usually either free or like a very small entrance fee. They're usually hosted by hostels or bars or something like that. And you get to meet a lot of really, really cool people who are there just to learn languages like you while having a few drinks. So why not? Go to actual physical classes. I know this one might seem kind of dumb and obvious, but if you have the money and you're willing to do it, then definitely do it. There is no better way in my opinion. Like, this is probably my favorite way of engaging with language learning. There's just nothing that can replace being face-to-face -face with an actual human teacher. Um, but especially if you're just starting the language, this is essential. And now a quick speed round of other additional methods. Change your phone's language into your target language. Physically write out random vocabulary on sticky notes and stick them all over your house. You'll never forget another word again. Keep a diary of stuff you do every day and write in your target language. Podcasts. I have nothing to say about podcasts. Sign up for online classes. They're like physical classes, but slightly worse. I probably forgot a few, but... This is it. This is the gist of it. This is the stuff I do whenever I feel like it, which most of the time is nearly every day. Not all of it every day, but the speaking to yourself part every day, the music every day, the subtitles every day, um, the YouTube every day, most, at least couple of them every day. Combinations of them all throughout your month is gonna help you tremendously, I promise. Keep in mind, I will say that there definitely is a difference between learning Spanish and learning Manx. I might make a small follow-up video on specifically how to find materials for small slash endangered languages, because that 
that definitely gets a bit trickier. In conclusion, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I like doing it, so I keep doing it, and you should do it too. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a great day and a wonderful night, and don't forget to tune in next week when I'll be live streaming myself learning sign language while blindfolded. Bye!